That gets to where I really wanted to go, because I read a very recent letter that you wrote to the Conservation Law Foundation. And like most of us, having lived through the big dig, we know you think big, but you sort of opened the curtain, raised the curtain for me on a whole vision of the future here and very significant change around this river that I really hadn't fallen to at all. And the heart of it uh, has to do with all of the aging bridges on this river, the fact that there's going to be, have to be very dramatic rebuilding over the next decade or two, and that coming out the other side, Fred Salvucci, envisions a very, very different relationship between automobile and pedestrian and river, a real makeover I read you calling for of the Charles as most of us have known it. Yeah, thanks. And I, 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 I really think we're at the moment of a great opportunity here because of the money available now to reconstruct these bridges. I think the name of the conservancy implies judgment. Uh, just because things are old doesn't mean they can be preserved. We've got a lot of 100-year-old mistakes out here. And this is an opportunity to reimagine what we're doing. The, the, the Carl Hagelin book that the Conservancy promoted, which I think is a great read, if the, any of you. Inventing the river. Inventing the Charles, which reminds us that Beautiful. the Charles is an invention. Uh, a human uh, invention. A human invention. Henry Lee's uh, Boston Garden uh, was part of the Charles River uh, a couple of hundred years ago. Look, look. We've dramatically changed the city and the river in many ways for the better. Certainly the Public Garden and the, and, and the Commonwealth Avenue Mall, I think, are big, big improvements. But what we've got here with a terrific prop right in back of me here yes. with the, the Longfellow Bridge, yeah. uh, a lot of what we're looking at was frozen in a particularly automobile-oriented, uh, ungreen period of time in the 50s and 60s. Uh, the Longfellow Bridge sidewalks, uh, which were clearly designed to reach those beautiful viewing areas, mm -hmm. were reduced to five foot in width. And at the end of the bridge, it's reduced to about 12 inches. You literally can't walk on that sidewalk. That's a mm -hmm. disgrace. Mm -hmm. Well, now that we're going to spend a lot of money rebuilding it, let's not rebuild the same stupid mistake. Let's you can quote that. Let's 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 create a decent sidewalk, uh, and let me connect it back to the big dig a little bit because people say, well, where are the cars going to go? Uh, I just one I just lane, sped in here on Sterile Drive. Yeah, Is that going one, away? One lane each direction on Longfellow for cars is Why not more just than path? enough. Take it all the way back. No, it, it, it's it's useful to have a place to, for the ambulance to go to the Mass General, but the if you think about the context here, the Charles River, before the big dig, the central artery bridge was six lanes wide. Where those six expressway lanes were, today there are 14 lanes. Mm -hmm. Now, that was in order to get the cars onto the interstate off of the city streets right. so pedestrians could have more space. We don't need to recreate what's out there on the Longfellow now. We've got a fantastic opportunity to provide at least the sidewalks we once had, and probably more, and the bicycle lane, so that the bridge becomes access for people to the river. But this is a radical change. Th this makes well, a lot more pedestrian room, a lot undoes, more bicycle. It, it's, Two lanes, I mean, it, it, it's not such a change. Is the Belmont change. representative here right now? Uh, <laughs> the Belmont representative supports this idea. In fact, really? I'm stealing it from him. Okay. As, uh, but I mean, people won't Representative Waltz was here, she can attest. She was at the same public meeting where he advocated this change. But is that the end of Storrow Drive as a, as a straight shot for some people downtown, as a commuting well, path? Let's, is that what you're saying? Let's, let's put Storrow into context. Uh, I think it was a terrible mistake when it was done. Uh, and, uh, but in fairness to those people, you know, 50, 60 years ago, when Storrow was built, there was no central artery, there was no Route 128, there was no Mass Pike. It was literally the only path across the city other than city streets. Well now, and the MBTA was totally kaput. It was yep. the MTA, it had no money. Nothing like, mm -hmm. uh, in the current context, we've had the central artery and now an expansion of its capacity with the big dig. We've got the turnpike, we've got Route 128, we've got Route 495, we've got commuter rail, we've got the rapid transit, it's time to give 
priority back to the river and the pedestrian access to it. Uh, here, here. I, 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 and, and, and if you think about the context of the Longfellow, the Longfellow freezes this bad moment in history. If you look at the way Starro curves to get under those two arches. Yes. Well, the two direct, first of all, Starro should be calmed down. Secondly, because it's going to have to be rebuilt. Let's rebuild it in a different manner. And you're saying we're going to have to put up with 10 or 20 years of severe traffic disruption anyway. While we're getting used to that, just forget about driving on it in general? Yeah, and, but let's not just tell people forget about it. Let's give them substantially improved public transportation in the meanwhile. So you're so saying the new highways you mentioned are not enough to make this happen? What, what else I'm do you I'm saying need? the highways are, th are there, and that's enough for the cars. What okay. we need, we need the Green Line to be extended. We need McGrath and O'Brien Highway to be converted to a boulevard so that people in Cambridge aren't crossing a highway when they walk over to the new Leachmere Station. Right. That's an alliance that I think is yeah. made in heaven for, yeah. for the groups that love the river. Yeah. Uh, the, the state has just bought, and I give a lot of credit to Governor Patrick for this, they've just concluded a deal to buy the, the CSX railway rights of way. So the state this week owns the so-called Grand Junction Railroad, the track that runs in back of MIT. Mm -hmm, right. That means we could run commuter rail service from Worcester, Framingham, Wellesley, et cetera, into Alston, across the Charles under the BU bridge, in back of MIT, put a stop at Kendall, and come around to North Station. And if you believe in intercity rail, you can go up to Maine. And Off you go. You know, so <laughs> we've got, we're, we're, I, I think we're sitting at a very exciting moment. And we've got ABC, a business group, which is very worried about the traffic disruption from the river bridge reconstruction, mm -hmm. advocating a lot of more public transportation to make the transition livable. I think everybody who considers themselves green ought to be supporting that effort. But uh, as Henry Lee would do, making sure that the other half of the deal is that we get a big green dividend out of that alliance, that, that the extra beautiful. capacity gives us if, if you think about the role Henry played, and it was very generous of him to talk about the modest role I played in the, uh, in the Park Plaza, uh, Henry's so great honest. virtue, and I would invite everybody here to emulate it, and as, as the commissioner said, there aren't many shy people here. Uh, Henry is, from some people's point of view, unreasonable. It is his great virtue. I would call him principled. And he insisted on a reasonable vision of what's appropriate next to the public garden. And he did so in a manner that strengthened the awareness and constituency for the public garden. It's time to demand that that beautiful bridge be rebuilt with adequate sidewalks, to demand that Starro Drive be rebuilt to a more modest scale. Both directions could fit under one bay of the Longfellow Bridge. You could have a major expansion of the Esplanade with the space that you gain. It's, That's it, big it, green it's, expansion. And you're talking about the bridges themselves being quite different. The Starting bridges, with Longfellow. Absolutely. I mean, much skinnier auto space. Skinnier auto space and wider sidewalks and space for the bicycles. Let me be a little contrary. Everybody's in love with bicycles. Yeah. Uh, I hate to say it, or maybe I don't hate to say it, if the bicycles take space from the automobile, maybe that's OK. If the bicycles intrude on the sidewalk, that's not OK. So the fact is, there are more and more bicycles in the city. So we've got to recognize that. And if we don't want our walking spaces and our parks to become eroded further, Cycloramas. then we need to carve out some space for the bicycles on these so-called parkways. Well, Make you're, them you're real gonna, parkways. You're going to take Storrow Drive down to two lanes in your vision. You're going to take the Longfellow Bridge down to two lanes. These are big changes. Uh, right. what, what about the other bridges? Do you make them? I mean, they're already fairly narrow, I guess. Uh, the, uh, I actually, I mean, everybody, 